My colleagues and I are very pleased to announce the discovery of two new horn dinosaurs, or ceratopsians, discovered in southern Utah by crews from the Utah Museum of Natural History and the Bureau of Land Management. The bigger of the two new dinosaurs has been named Utah Ceratops. It's a giant plant-eating animal about 20 feet long with a skull almost 7 feet in length. In addition to a large horn over the nose, Utah Ceratops has short, blunt eye horns that project strongly to the side rather than upward, much more like the horns of a modern bison than those of Triceratops. Second of the new species is Cosmoceratops, which was a little smaller than Utah Ceratops, but still had a huge skull. It too has sideways oriented eye horns, but much longer and more pointed than in Utah Ceratops. Additional horns can be seen over the nose, at the tip of each cheekbone, and all along the rear margin of the bony frill. With a total of 15 well-developed horns, Cosmoceratops ranks as the most ornate headed dinosaur known. These new horned dinosaurs were discovered in Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, which encompasses almost two million acres of high desert terrain in southern Utah. Grand Staircase is the largest national monument in the United States and one of the country's last great, largely unexplored, dinosaur boneyards. During the past decade, crews from the University of Utah and several partner institutions have unearthed a new assemblage of more than a dozen dinosaurs in Grand Staircase, from giant duck-billed herbivores to menacing tyrannosaur predators. Not T. rex, but some of its smaller cousins. Most remarkable of all is that virtually every identifiable dinosaur species found in the monument is new to science. And that is a major puzzle. For most of the late Cretaceous, a warm, shallow sea flooded the central region of North America, extending from the Arctic Ocean in the north to the Gulf of Mexico in the south, this seaway subdivided the continent into eastern and western land masses for almost 30 million years. The western landmass, known as Laramidia, was less than a third the size of present-day North America. So Cosmoceratops and Utahceratops were inhabitants of this lost continent of Laramidia, living in a subtropical swamp about 100 kilometers from the seaway. Picture dinosaurs wandering through a Louisiana bayou and you begin to get the idea. Most known Laramidian dinosaurs were concentrated in a narrow belt of lowlands sandwiched between the seaway to the east and mountains to the west. Since the 1960s, paleontologists have noticed that some major groups of dinosaurs seem to be found all over Laramidia, but different species of these groups occurred in the north than in the south. The notion of dinosaur provinces was very puzzling, given the giant body sizes of many of the dinosaurs and the relatively small size of Laramidia. Some paleontologists argue that these northern and southern dinosaurs didn't actually live together, but rather existed during different intervals of the Cretaceous. Utahceratops and Cosmoceratops directly refute that criticism. Thanks to the discovery of several volcanic ash layers, which can now be dated, we can show that they lived at the same time as different varieties of horned dinosaurs up north in Alberta. Today on Africa, there are five species of giant mammals that fall into the size range of rhinos to elephants. This emerging picture is that 76 million years ago, at least 20 rhino to elephant sized dinosaurs lived simultaneously on Laramidia, a landmass less than one quarter the size of Africa. Now, how could so many different varieties of giant animals have coexisted on such a small chunk of real estate? That's a mystery we're still trying to figure out. But one thing's for sure, many more dinosaurs remain to be unearthed in southern Utah and plenty of surprises still await us out there.